What's up, y'all? Um, it's been a it's been a second. I'm done with my first year of school schooling. Um, I'm working right now. First day of work was today, uh, and today, uh, or in this video, I'll be showing you a little bit about building a NAS, a network attached storage, basically a server with a bunch of drives on it that um, you can access. Before we get uh, too into things, here's a nice overview for what an NAS actually does. Basically, it'll work like a cloud, cloud except uh, it stores data locally on your drives instead of on the cloud on someone else's drives. So, uh, for example, we have Singing Kitty here and Smoking Kitty here. Uh, Smoking Kitty is on the laptop and Singing Kitty is on the desktop. So, if, uh, let's say Smoking Kitty got pushed onto our NAS, our drive here, and then... Uh, Seeing Kitty on the desktop wanted to pull him back, they could pull them back and get them onto the desktop. Uh, yeah, obviously that's really simplified, but yeah, that's literally how it works. The one reason that I would choose this solution over something like cloud storage is cost efficiency. For something like Apple storage, which is what I have currently, I have a 200 gigabyte plan that's $3 a month. If I wanted as much as I have that I'm going to put into my NAS right now, which is 16 terabytes, it'd be $60 a month. And that's like 720 a year, right? So at that point, uh, this is pretty worthwhile of an investment. Uh, the DXP 4800 plus setup that we're gonna have is gonna be around a grand. So after like a year and a half, it'll basically pay itself off. What's pretty cool is that the speeds also uh, maintain really well. If I upload this file, this is um, a 1.9 gigabyte file. Let's see how long it takes. Um, 54 megabytes a second. Yeah, so I'd say it took just around 35 seconds. Let's say we upload the same file, 1.9 gigabytes, onto our Google Drive. Um, how long does that take? Two minutes, one minute. Yeah, so about double the time that uh, it took on this system. So, yeah, let's get the building. I have my smoothie. I'm building the server. 16 terabytes of storage. We have these, um, these are, what are these? Western Digital 4 terabyte red drives, red plus drives. Yeah, we're gonna put four of these Johns in here, and then that'll give us a uh, network storage, supposedly. If any of you all are looking to get one of these guys, the one I'm building right now is, a. Uh, DXP 4800 plus yeah from NAS or it's a NAS from Ukraine um, and yeah I have the four terabytes four or four terabyte drives yeah it's pretty cool so far the building experience is really good yeah so the more I think about it uh, 16 terabytes is looky crazy amount um, it's my phone where did it go yeah my phone has like Oh, oops. Caseless. <laughs> yeah, my phone is like a hundred something. So that's like a lot of times more than my phone, which is, yeah, it's pretty wild. But yeah, to get into these drives here, I thought this was kind of funny. They have this little key. Yeah, so these guys come with this little key and uh, this position is the locked when it's like when this bit here is vertical uh it's locked is that gonna focus yeah, yeah when this bit is vertical that means it's locked and then if it's horizontal like that it means it's uh unlocked and when it's unlocked you can press in on these guys and these trays will come out and basically in one of these trays that's where we're gonna throw this hard drive and then we're installing it all the way in there for the computer internals to work on. And then uh, that's connected to all my network stuff with an ethernet cable. Or actually, that that up there is the router. But yeah. First one here is uh, down. We got it uh, all locked in to specification. This guy should be ready to slot in. But uh, turns out these instructions are not um, the greatest so if any of you guys do decide to build this let me uh let me show you guys how it actually works 
here it just says to here let me let this focus it just says to um take out this little screw that's uh oh wrong side it's oh wait no right side it just tells you to take out this screw that's like on the end here but uh you actually need to do more than just take out you see it right that one you need to do more than just take out that screw um you also need to uh press here on this back bit let me zoom out again uh, how it works is you need to press down here on this back bit and pop this like side out and then you just uh, and then you can follow the rest of the instructions just seat the drive in push it back in and then you'll be done okay I think I got all these drives set up here um, all the same ones as you saw the four terabytes but uh yeah if I wanted to I oops drop my phone uh, if I wanted to we could also throw uh, m2s in the sky but we are not going to do that today because I don't have any spare m2s we only have these hard drives um, but yeah I think the maximum capacity that we could potentially put in this guy is like hundred twelve terabytes which is pretty insane I don't even know what comes after a after a terabyte but I can tell you I definitely won't be using it that much um, and yeah it transfers like 1250 megabytes per second which is pretty insane there's like a compatibility there's a compatibility list for like what kind of stuff goes in here which I will throw in the description or up on the screen and uh, if you all are looking at this guy specifically take a look at that uh, and find out what exactly you can throw in here to maximize out that storage space One, two, three, four, and we're all, we're all loaded up. That was easy. I think the only thing the instructions missed was that little flap that you had to press up on the bottom of the drive containers. There's actually the the bottom of the server, and I accidentally just dropped screws in here. But um, this is where you can put in those M2s that I was talking about. Uh, I don't have any right now, but if I did, I'd chuck them in here. And then we plug in, here we go, Ethernet in, and then our power supply cable. So it should be powered now, and this LAN should also be in. Oh, there we go, got the lights on. Can't tell if that's green or orange. If you didn't know, I'm colorblind. Maybe that's not even green or orange. Who knows? But uh, I'm gonna assume that's good. Cause uh, it's blinking. If you guys are interested in the hardware specs of what's in here, um, it's got a Intel 8505 5 core. Um, yeah, I don't know what configuration of RAM this has, but I also don't know what an 855505 5 core is, but uh, I'm sure some of you guys know. So, that's for those of you guys that do want to know. Okay, first power on. I think uh, what it is... Oh, I think that's on, I think that's on. Now we gotta search for this device on our network. Um, this guy is showing up. DXP4800 Plus. And that's the Kirk model. I doubt my, I doubt my neighbors would have one of these guys. Um, I tried a different... LAN cable or Ethernet cable. This one has like it's a different one they gave me, but it's like it's steel tipped. Um, yeah, it's like it's not like one of these. Is that gonna focus? It's not like one of these. It has like steel tips at the end, but yeah, that one works much better. We are initializing a oh, localization. Uh, okay. Yeah, I connected my email, so now it'll like notify me if it crashes or anything. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm still waiting. This guy is rebooting system update, I think. Uh, my friend made this song. You guys, you guys should go listen to it. Keep Hoping by uh, Mary Lowe and Didactic. My friend's Didactic. Pretty cool song. We're locked in. Um, it's showing 3.6 terabytes for all of them, but 
there's a bunch of different uh, modes that you can have them on. Uh, it's just based off of like drive protection. I think we will be going with a uh, RAID 5, which is like second to highest. Uh, it's even if one drive gets uh, messed up, it's restorable. I'm sure that's good enough for me. Whoa, yeah. So it's keeping like three terabytes for data protection. And we're gonna format it. Okay, so uh, we got this guy all set up. Uh, it had to sync for a bit, so this is the next day. But come over here. Everyone has a custom link for their server, and uh, it'll take you like this little, like computer interface-looking thing when you put it in, in a server or in into a browser. And here, uh, this is what I have currently. It's two pictures, just the album covers that I like, and then um, a video. But uh, what's really cool is that it's over here, and it's all being stored on the server over there that uh, we just set up, right? And it's all being stored on that server over there that we just set up. If I go over here on my phone to the app, then um, you can also just access all the files. See, like, uh, these are the same ones that are right there and they're all being uh, saved over there on the server so even if I was someone else I could just give them the link uh, and then a temporary profile and they could access this immediately so that's pretty fire this is just uh, 16 terabytes that I can use so um, yeah I'm gonna go out and test how the connections are in a workplace or a cafe or something if I was studying there and uh, let's check out how that works out I need to show that I'm not at home. I built a Holy shit, pictures are still there. Yeah. Is that Chunking Express? No. I was a kid, what do you mean is that Chunking Express? Bro, it looked like that, that one clip. Yeah. I haven't done it, like, so I'm like, every single thing on my Mac, I haven't edited a single picture. Okay, so another really cool thing about uh, Ugreen, especially their NS system, is that it has this automatic classification feature uh, through AI, and it's all just uh, local stuff. It all runs on your computer, so no worries about uh, your information getting leaked, or yeah, as security becomes more important. So for example here, um, I've added some photos of myself that my friend took, and if we go to albums, uh, they do get recognized under people. I've named myself, so uh, it is Justin, but yeah, it can recognize me out of all of these photos. Then if we go to something like object recognition, animal, we see that it correctly classifies all of these different um, animals, cats, dogs, etc. Transportation correctly picks out all my tra uh, car photos that I've uploaded here. Um, yeah, so definitely a bunch of really cool Identification identification features. It can also uh, recognize the breeds of cats here. Uh, orange cat. Well, types of cats, I guess. Maine Coon, Abyssinian. Yeah, super dope. Um, and all these files are like accessible uh, from wherever: tablet, phone, laptop. And I can share them really easily. Uh, I'll just grab this and take the link. I can just send that to my friend, uh, and he'll be able to look at them. So super easy to actually share stuff, which is really nice for uh, when I'll be making my short film with one of my other friends. Okay, uh, I've shared the link to my friend here, William. You can see the, the pictures show up clearly. Uh, and yeah, there will be a link for a 15% discount in the description. So yeah, go check out the DXP 4800 plus. <laughs> yeah, genuinely, it's super cool how the uh, that server right there can do all of that. Um, run all of that. Yeah, I had fun setting it up and everything. Um, just an update for the channel itself. I have basically not posted for like two months now, I'm guessing, by the time you guys will see this. But uh, I've been busy, super busy. I originally had plans for the summer that fell through, like funding wise, and that led to me kind of applying to like a ton of jobs like a hundred jobs in like two weeks 
and through a very very lucky uh, sequence events I was able to be employed so I'm not going to be unemployed this summer I am working um, it's a pretty cool place really cool actually so um, hopefully I will be able to show you guys some kind of content from there um, but yeah I should be making a lot of videos that you guys should be expecting <laughs> and I should be uploading at least more regularly than uh, I have been in the past two months hope you guys are swell um, not too upset that I <laughs> haven't really posted but I got the chance to try out this really cool uh, piece of technology uh, thank you to you green for sending this out and sponsoring this video and um yeah hopefully you guys uh, <laughs> try it out if you ever need something like this and have the capabilities to get one I think servers are a super cool idea and uh, I just was never able to get one up until now yeah um, I will throw uh, a discount link in the description I think if any of you guys want to check this out um, yeah thanks for watching as always uh, we should have some cool videos coming up and hopefully stuff that is more workplace related ish maybe um, yeah, bye.